Debian 14 is here, the next version of the community maintained Linux distribution still serving as the base of many other popular ones like Ubuntu, Kali Linux, enterprise solutions like Proxmox and of course everything based off of those as well. You get 5 years of security updates, better support for a lot more hardware and a lot of updated desktop environments that provide you with a good experience for a desktop and especially for servers. So what's new in this release? How is it different from other Linux distributions? And how can you find out if Debian is the right choice for you? All of this and more in today's video. Debian in the Linux space is known as a so-called stable distribution. But what does that even mean exactly? Well, many assume that it just means that this Linux operating system is less likely to crash. But it's not as simple as that. Packages, drivers and whatever else your computer needs to operate are not better on a stable distribution, but they are more thoroughly tested and very importantly stay the same for a long time, unless security issues arise. Stable distributions tend to be more reliable than unstable ones, because packages that work don't suddenly get replaced. Something might get messed up if you forget to update it or because the testing process was done faster and less careful. However, that does not necessarily need to have an impact on actual stability. Yeah, complicated. For Debian, a new release like Trixie is huge, because it allows the distribution to catch up to other distros in terms of modernness, a huge jump in hardware compatibility, speed and many more improvements over its predecessor. For desktop users, you get the currently latest release of the GNOME desktop environment, which means a lot of changes. You get support for the new file picker that shows thumbnails for images and videos, better quick settings with improved hardware interaction, the new OneDrive online accounts integration, remote desktop support without having to be logged in all the time, a new design for the file browser, accent colors, a slightly adjusted dark mode theme, better support for smaller screens, a digital well-beings page in the settings and support for HDR displays, fractional scaling and optionally also variable refresh rates, just to name a few. KDE Plasma also received a huge jump from the previously used version 5.27 up to 6.3.6, .6. not quite the latest version but still full of improvements. Some highlights include the new floating by default panel, Wayland is now being used by default, allowing for the use of HDR, you get improved fractional scaling, enhanced drawing tablet support, a new overview effect that makes it even easier to manage multiple workspaces, UI improvements across the board to improve consistency, speed and overall usability, as well as many new effects like the beloved cube, shake to find cursor functionality and color blindness correction filters. Just like on GNOME, you can now also access your Plasma desktop directly via RDP without installing any additional software, and support for keyboard shortcuts has been improved. I'm not going too deep into the other desktop environments, since there weren't that many changes that the average user notices. They mostly feature slight improvements to speed and design, experimental Wayland support which will eventually replace X11 on most Linux desktop environments and some quality of life improvements. So as of right now, Debian 13 is fairly up to date when it comes to the desktop experience and you won't really miss much in contrast to other popular Linux distributions like Fedora, Ubuntu and even Arch. However, again, Debian is a stable Linux distribution, so these desktop environment versions are going to stick for a while. In terms of other changes that might be relevant to desktop users, Debian 13 now ships with the Linux kernel 6.12, which means that AMD RDNA 4 graphics cards, as in the 9000 series, are now compatible. Debian now supports the Raspberry Pi 5, brings improvements to the Intel Aero and Luna Lake CPU architecture, which many PCs use nowadays, support for Wi-Fi 7, as well as support for a lot more hardware in general. On the more technical side of things, the Package Manager app had a new major release, improving performance and support for the new TEP822 format. The temp directory uses tempfs by default, which would improve disk wear, especially on SSDs. HTTP boot is now supported to boot Debian faster over a network, and many tools like curl got performance upgrades. Like I'm not going to list all of them, because there were a lot of changes. Ok, so that's it for a quick summary. So, is Debian the right distribution for you and how is it different from all of the others? Unlike the so often called corporate distributions like Red Hat Enterprise, Fedora and Azusa versions, Debian, just like Arch, is a community maintained distro and mostly exists of volunteers that develop and maintain it throughout the years. 
This, to no surprise, creates a community of open source enthusiasts who enjoy the openness of Linux operating systems without a single identity having massive influence over it. And it's why many prefer using those even more open distributions. However, while Debian is a really great choice for servers as well as desktop PCs that use older hardware, it just doesn't keep up with newer releases, which doesn't really make it a great choice for someone who just bought a new PC with bleeding edge hardware. Laptop users are also often confronted with problems. While Debian is still one of the best maintained distros with a lot of support for devices, including their drivers, the newer the device, the less likely it is that a stable driver exists and that it performs properly. Debian's purpose is to not change much over the course of its lifespan. If your hardware supports it, then it's rock solid and it won't disappoint you. If it doesn't though, then there isn't much hope for the changing until the next big release. One solution that many Debian users rely on is the switch to the Debian testing or unstable branch, where new packages get released much sooner and tested for the next release. Testing is basically a mid up to date tier, whereas you get packages that already have been tested a bit by users of the unstable branch. However, you are the last ones to get security updates, as stable and unstable have a higher priority. Unstable is a true rolling release, usually a bit slower than Arch, but you are getting updates really fast, at the cost of the stability that we talked about earlier. So is Debian the right distribution for you? Well, for an absolute beginner, the live ISO installer or finding the right boot image is not as easy and straightforward as on other distros, but still manageable. It also doesn't come with a lot of help out of the box, like wider application support via Flatpak and proprietary driver support. If Debian works on your PC out of the box, you're fine with installing some additional dependencies and you like a more static approach on your desktop in terms of how much it changes over the years, then it's a great choice. And with Flatpak, you do get access to newer software anyway, without the need of switching to a testing or unstable branch. If you want to rely on more up-to-date system dependencies and desktop environments, you can consider using the testing or unstable branch, but on your own risk of course. My personal advice is, if you're just starting out with Linux, use one of the more user-friendly distributions first. With great power comes great responsibility and getting to know Linux a bit before jumping straight into a distribution on either side of the spectrum can't hurt. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think of Debian 14? Are you excited for the new changes? Are you going to try it out? And if so, are you going for the stable release or the testing branches? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. I hope you had a blast watching. Thanks again and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.